right, uh, my name's Chris, this is Daniel. We're from RapidScan 3D. Um, we're a local company and uh, we specialize in 3D scanning. So my presentation is basically just a quick thing about different kind of technologies that are out there. Um, we brought one scanner that's portable, so it's nice and easy to kind of show you how easy it is to use 3D scanners. Um, and if you have any questions, just let us know. Um, so the conventional way of uh, taking measurements, people have been doing it from drawings to using calipers uh, or height gauges. Um, and if anyone uses those, you know it takes a lot of time. It can be off uh, here and there, depending on how complex the part can be. Um, so kind of like the new trend, there's a few different ways to do, get a 3D model. One is either using a touch probe, um, CMM, or um, articulated arm. Um, these are typically where you're going to bring your part to the actual 3D machine and then take points. So they're single point measurements. Uh, the great thing about these uh, machines is that they're very accurate. Um, so if you have, for instance, a head, you can bring it over to the machine and take points very accurate. Um, the only issue is that with the big CMM, you have to bring your part over there and it does take a lot of time. With laser scanners, um, like there's the ferro arm that's out there. Basi basically, it's a laser that projects onto a surface, bounces off, and uh, goes to the camera. So each point that it takes, it has an XYZ coordinate. Um, with those scanners, um, you could be scanning about 20,000 points per inch. So you're collecting a lot more data than you would be if you're just on a regular CMM. There's also photogrammetry. And what photogrammetry is, is basically putting uh, reflective targets onto a part. And then you can go around and take pictures of, of the car from different angles. And then you'd actually be matching up each of the targets to each other. So you're able to get a 3D model um, out of that. And I know in the last presentation, they talking a little bit about white light scanners. So there's a couple different um, scanners that are out there that can do the job. Um, one's white light basically projects a pattern onto a surface and takes multiple pictures and matches them up. Um, so typically, you'll need to use targets like you see on the wheel there. And those targets are used for the alignment process. A newer technology is a blue light scanner. It has a different wavelength, so it's able to scan shinier parts and flat black parts. Um, and with this, you're getting really good accuracy. Um, scanners can get 12 micron accuracy levels down on small parts. Um, on, this, on this scanner, you see there's a scanner right there. Uh, projects the pattern. And then there's two on each side. With this, it has an automated solution. It's a two-axis turntable. So you can put your part on there, uh, fix it, and start scanning. And you'll get a 3D model out of uh, that whole part. Of course, to get the underneath, you have to flip it over and do the same thing. Um, and then you can just snap fit them together. And then there's uh, handheld scanners, which we actually brought one here. Um, it's a structured white light video scanner. So it projects a pattern and takes a video. Um, it's a lot more portable than the CMM, so you can actually take it to a car. Um, this one has ability for a power pack, so you can actually bring your laptop, the scanner, power pack. You don't need to be plugged into any walls, and you can scan. Um, there's a difference, big difference, between a CMM and a portable scanner. It really depends on what your application is and what kind of accuracy you have. Um, you know, CMMs, you can get sub, sub thou accuracy. Some of the blue light scanners, micron accuracy, this is about four thou accuracy. So, you know, for real high precision parts, you're probably not going to want to use this one. You're probably going to want to use one of the other machines. Um, so actually, we'll, uh, we can do a little uh, demo of this so you can see kind of what it looks like. Um, and all the scanners, they're, they have, all of them have pros and cons. We always say there's probably about an 80-20 rule on them. So if you get one scanner, more than likely it could do 80% of what you want it to do. Other 20%, you're going to have to either do another scanner or kind of play around with it. So this is a, just a preview of what you're seeing when you're scanning. And as you can see up here, it might be hard to see from there, but there's patterns that it's projecting onto the onto the wall. So it's the same thing as right here. So what I can do is I can uh, start recording. This has started to turn green.
And I'll just stop it here so you guys can kind of see how it works. So this is still just a point cloud, whereas uh, if you were to take those CMMs and just take points, it would take a long time to get this many. Um, so this is a point cloud, as you can see all the points when he's rotating. Um, and this is just a quick shade. Um, within the software, you can take this point cloud into a mesh, so you can rapid prototype it. You can uh, take it into a third-party software to start doing surfacing. Um, there is a process to go through it to, sh to uh, get to that. But what we can do is we'll just show you what the actual manifold look if we were to scan it all in one scan or two scans. If you want to just show the top manifold and hide scan 12. And then just close out the tools bar. Or just close out the tools, yeah. So right now this is an STL file of, this, of the manifold. Um, I think we scanned it in two positions and then put the data together. Um, so it's really good to get the general idea on the smaller parts, the real fine, fine detail. You're not going to get it as good as if you would have taken a laser scanner or a CMM to it because you could get a little bit better data. But to get the general idea, get the surfaces, um, this could be sent to a rapid prototyping machine or it could be taken into Polyworks, Geomagic, Rapid Form, Surfaced, and then you'd have a 3D uh, CAD model of it. So basically, I just wanted to show you know, this scanner and some of the other ideas of uh, 3D scanning to get 3D models. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, just let us know. You know we can uh, show some other data that we have. If you guys want to see that, just let us know. Yeah.